Hey folks, Rick here. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, watch that one. This is part two of my opinion of the real estate economy for uh, the year 2020. Guys, come on. It's incredible. Okay, the market's gonna be incredible and just keeps getting better. Inventory, you know, we're in Las Vegas, we're in the Scottsdale, Phoenix area, we're also in California. I mean, inventory is going down all the time, all right? Uh, you know, so it's getting, that's why you should become a listing agent, of course. But, you know, so as that happens, appreciation goes up and so forth. So inventory, when inventory is going down, it's always an incredible uh, measuring stick for how the market is and the market's completely healthy, okay? The next one is recession, okay? so. The only reason some of you are still hearing recession, and a lot of you haven't brought that up in months on my coaching, is because it's an election year coming. Okay, one party wants the other party in. It's not a political statement, it's a fact. Okay, and that means that it, it, you know, the train has to be coming because the economy can't be good, otherwise why would you put somebody else in the office? So it's just a, it's a, it's an election year. The only reason you're hearing, I mean, with all the factors that we have, I don't know where a recession would sneak up on us right now. Okay, it's just, it's just not in the cards, at least for 2020. And a lot of people are saying through the end of 2021, which is a pretty bold, that's two years. Okay, and, I, and there's a lot of economists that are comfortable saying that right now, which is a really good indication for us. Okay, um, millennials. I mean, millennials are like a warehouse of buyers. A lot of them were just watching to see what's gonna happen. So when a lot of them decide to buy, that's gonna be an incredible influx of buyers into the marketplace, almost like warehouse doors opening, boom. Okay, I can see that happening in 20 and 21 as well. iBuyers, if I'm a listing agent, and I am, okay, I'm using iBuyers to my benefit. If I, if, well, first off, should sellers have the right to talk to everybody? The answer is yes. So whenever you say like open door, offer pad, oh, they're bad, 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 bad. Don't talk to those people. All you're saying is call them as soon as possible. That's what the consumer's hearing. What you do is you show them. So if I'm dealing with somebody that wants to talk to one of them, I'm gonna have them, or I can get it for them, the offer, bring it over, show them the fees and everything involved versus what I can get them. And I'm gonna tell you 9.9 out of 10 times, it makes my six and 7% look a hell of a lot better than 15, 20%, okay? So don't, don't try to hide the iBuyers, show them. Same with Amazon, okay? That's a, it, really, if you're with Berkshire Hathaway, all those people just make you look even better. But you have to show them. You can't just tell them they're bad. No, they're not bad. They're very helpful to you if you use them. Okay, so that's iBuyers. And then I would also say, especially if you're in Arizona and Nevada, become good with the new construction in your area because you're going to probably start showing more of it as inventory goes down. So be knowledgeable with your home market, okay? And then I would also say that social media is also very helpful, okay, for you to become... Um, the most knowledgeable person in your area. Show people what you're doing every day, I think is also an important part. So when you add all these things together, part one tape, part two, I say tape, shows my age, uh, video, okay? You can see that this market is gonna be incredible, and, but ultimately, you can have an incredible market, but if you're not taking any action, it doesn't matter. You gotta do all the things that we're talking about to be successful in this business to take advantage of it. Hope to see you guys soon and make 2020 your best year ever.